All right, so what if you have an audience, but they're not buying? This is for all of you who are experiencing that. And I've, been work, I've worked with over 10 years of marketing coaching, many clients who kind of came to me with that problem. Like, hey, I've got a couple hundred email subscribers. I've got a few thousand email subscribers, but my products or my services aren't selling well enough uh, to sustain uh, you know, a, a, a business, you know, let alone thrive. So what is going on? <laughs> Why aren't they buying? let's talk about this so if you ask you know if you kind of start doing some marketing reading about you know how to grow your business etc sometimes you'll come across this thing called the rule of seven the rule of seven says that if your audience isn't hasn't seen the pro the advertisement for the product or service at least seven times then they haven't really made a decision whether or not to buy so is that true, the rule of seven? Well, over the past couple years, uh, when I've had very consistent rhythm of offerings, meaning every month you know, I'm selling a new online course, I have not found the rule of seven to be true. In fact, most of you who buy my courses, the first time you see it, you buy it, or the second or third time you see it, you buy it. Most of the students are like that. Not everybody. Some people do need to see it seven times, but most of the people I've, I've noticed just need one to three times within, within a month, within a one month time frame, to decide whether or not to buy it. If they've seen it three times and, and they still haven't bought, then they're probably not going to buy it at, at, at this time, okay, or, or for the next while. And if you keep showing that ad to them or a different ad, but it's the same product, then what happens is they get they get what's called ad fatigue. It's a real thing. If you look it up, ad fatigue is when somebody gets tired of seeing an advertisement for a product or service. And what happens with ad fatigue is that they also get tired of that brand that keeps trying to advertise the thing to them. So you don't want your audience to have ad fatigue for whatever you're selling. So like I said, my recommendation uh, is to make sure, and this is something that some of you really need to do. Um, a lot of you who are here don't want to appear salesy to your audience. You don't want to appear pushy, um, you know, to your audience. And that's a great thing that you don't want that. But at the same time, if they if they haven't seen if what, are, what is it you're trying to sell right now? What service are you trying to sell or what product you're trying to sell? Let's say this month, if you could sell something this month, what would that something be? Or to sell more of something, what would that be? Okay. Has your audience seen that advertisement for that product or service at least one time this month? On average, everybody in your audience has seen it at least once. If not, how about two or three times? If not, then that, that's probably a good reason why they're not buying is you're not even getting the right reach. So that's the first principle I want to share with you. I have three principles today, reach, match, and trust. The reach is like, again, like I said, ask yourself, what am I trying to, what would I like to sell more of this month? If I could pick one thing, what would I like to sell more of this month? Okay, great. Got that. Now has my audience on average seen it at least once, if not two to three times and beyond three times in this month, that's, that's enough. And then the next month, I shouldn't try to sell the same thing again because they've already saw it last month. So next month, if I'm going to sell something, I should sell something different. Or if I only have one thing, then the next month, if I'm going to sell it, then I should sell it in a very different way, like tell a very different story about it, approach it from a very different way because I don't want ad fatigue. This is why I sell something different every month. Have you noticed? I only sell the same course at most once a year. And usually after I sell it, two years in a row, sometimes three years in a row, if it's very popular, I'll then, I won't sell that course again for another two to three years. So I prevent ad fatigue for you. So every time, every month you can expect something new from me, but it's not like I'm going to create new courses forever. I just recycle them just every two to three years. I recycle them. So, all right, reach. Are you, re so, so how do you reach people, right? Email newsletter, let everybody know, Hey, uh, you know, you haven't heard about this in a while. I want to let you know that I offer this and I'm really, you know, I'm passionate about this. I really, um, this really helps the people that, that, that use it. I mean, these are the right kinds of people that should 
uh, inquire about this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So email newsletter and um, your social media audience, whether you use Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or Medium or, or Twitter, whatever, have they seen it enough times? And with Facebook and Instagram, nice things that you could use ads, paid ads to easily reach your warm audience um, at least one, two or three times about that thing in a given month. Okay, so that's the first principle. Why, why isn't your audience buying? Because you haven't reached um, most of them about this thing at least one, two or three times in a month. Okay, that's reach. Second one, if it's still not working, you're reaching them, but they're not buying, okay? Then the second reason is match. Match, meaning, it's not a good match for them right now. Your product isn't solving a problem that they want solved right now. That really is the strongest indicator. Um, you know, people say, well, I don't, my product doesn't solve problems. It just gives people a good experience. It helps you reach a certain goal. Solving problems, especially a problem that is painful and urgent for them, that creates the most, the best match. Okay, I mean, think about it. Don't you want to ease human suffering, right? Wouldn't it be great to have less human suffering in the world? That's what we all want, less human suffering in the world at the, at the baseline. Now, once we, get, once we help relieve human suffering, then we can talk about you know, self-transcendence, right? Um, you know, so let's just try to ease human suffering first. So can you create or, or offer a product or service that eases human suffering? Okay, so that, that's, that's the best match. It's, that's, people are more likely to buy it if it eases their current urgent pain, human suffering, okay? Uh, now, if you really, you know, the thing is, well, you might say, well, George, you don't, your, your courses don't really ease human suffering. It's more like people are learning new skills or trying to thrive rather than trying to survive. I know some of, the, some of the people here do take my courses to try to survive, but some of you take it to try to thrive. So, George, how, how do you make it work, right? You don't, well, that's the third principle we'll get to, which is once you, get, once you have enough trust and enough reach, you can, you can then sell things that help people transcend. Self-actualization self, 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 self and transcendence is much easier when you have the right trust and reach. Um, but before then, uh, the best match is to ease their, ease their suffering. So what that means is you need to get to know your audience well enough through surveys or through conversations to find out where they are suffering that you feel compassionate towards, that you feel qualified to help ease. And can you shape or frame or somehow market your product or service as helping to ease that suffering because you believe it does. And you can see that it works for the people who've tried it. So match is really, really important. Um, and then finally, the third principle is, is trust, okay? Trust is such a big one because I've seen so many clients over the years who have, you know, a decent sized audience, like I said, at least a thousand email subscribers or whatever. And they are emailing their subscribers about their product, but their, but their audience isn't buying. Why? Why isn't their audience buying? Like I said, it could be a match problem. If they have enough reach, it could be a match problem. But even sometimes they survey the audience and the audience says, yes, that's interesting to me. But then yet they don't buy. Why is that? because of trust issues, okay? And there are two times, types of credibility that we need to build uh, to, to have enough trust for the audience to buy. One is topical credibility. What this means is that, does the audience trust you enough to have expertise about that topic that you're trying to sell a product or service in? So if you are selling this thing, but then they, don't, they haven't seen you talk about that topic, they, in other words, content creation. I've, I talk about this all the time in my, in my videos, right? That's my favorite way of earning your trust about what I do. Um, I sell, you know, products and services, you know, that are in the ballpark of what I talk about in my content. But my content, when I, when I create and distribute content to you, it's not always trying to sell you on things. It's usually not trying to sell you. I mean, if you watch my videos, most of my videos aren't trying to sell you on a course, but they're just trying to share what I genuinely find to be helpful on, on a particular topic that I, my clients have found helpful or that I have found helpful and that, that you might find helpful as well. So it's a generous way. Uh, it's a genuine way of trying to help and, and also a genuine way of trying to express what I think is important for the world to understand. So, so therefore, when I sell 
sell courses or products or services related in the ballpark of what I talk about. People go, oh yeah, George knows about that kind of stuff because I have found his content helpful on that. So therefore I trust that he knows about that. So that's the first type of credibility, topical credibility. Second type is general credibility. Now, what does this mean? I, again, I see a lot of my clients, you know, first they come to me and they, they learn my ways. They'll realize, oh, I, I need to build more general credibility. What is this? General credibility is basically like, do they trust you as a person? Yeah, do they trust you as a business and as a person? Like, do they feel like you're always trying to sell to them? Do they feel like you're always trying to make them do things? Or do they feel like you really genuinely, uh, genuinely want to help without attachment? This is where I think a lot of you uh, can continue to, to, to grow in. Like, how, how can I show my audience I want to help them without attachment, even if they never buy? I know that's a hard one. That's a hard one to sit with, even if they never buy. So you have to believe that. If you don't believe that, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But even if you never buy from me, I'm still gonna be making videos for you. You see, it's true. Even if you never buy from me, I'm still gonna be writing articles to try to help you. That's it, even if you never buy from me. Now, because I genuinely believe that, I went through a kind of a spiritual transformation years ago that kind of totally revamped my business and that spiritual transformation gave me a very deep sense of security um, even though my finances were not secure that spirit gave me a deep sense of security so that I could actually serve without attachment and say even if you never buy I'm still going to do this because I believe in it I believe in this I believe in this content so um, it, so I know it's so really, I, essentially, I think the first, the most important task all of us need is to dive into our spiritual path. Whatever our spiritual path is, if we dive into it, if we really work with it, we find this profound sense of security and ease. This, prof, this, this deep, uh, sort of always there undercurrent of it's all going to be okay. It's from spiritual, your spiritual path has that as well as mine and if we dive into it and we and we feel that deep sense of ah it's going to be okay not just going to be okay it is all somehow miraculously perfect right now i and sometimes i can't explain it especially in 2020 but somehow there is a greater plan that is so beautiful that if i that sometimes i catch glimpses of it and i go i'm just blown away and for me I read near-death experiences. You know, one of my web, favorite websites, near-death.com, near-death.com. And go, to, go there, click on exceptional NDEs and read some of those things and you'll get glimpses, glimpses of the greater reality that, oh my God, it's so perfect. You can't even imagine. It is beyond, it is beyond beautiful and beyond loving. It's beyond uh, the, the, the best thing that you could have ever imagined. So if that deep ease and security is there, then you can create content with generosity and without attachment, then your audience will feel it. Your audience will feel it and you will earn their trust naturally. It's not, we don't have to try to build trust. I, I always find that's inter interesting when people say build trust. I'm like, if someone is trying to build trust with me, <laughs> it's suspicious, right? It sounds weird. It sounds manipulative, but we don't build trust. We, we simply find our deep security. We serve generously without attachment, and we naturally earn trust. It's not something we try to earn their trust. It just naturally happens because why? Because we're trustworthy, because we're trustworthy. So, so there you go, three principles. I hope this is helpful. Reach, match, and trust. See what you need to work on in your business. And I, I promise, well, I, I promise that if you do work with these three principles, you will see improvement in your marketing. And if you have any questions, I'm always happy to, uh, to see your questions or comments below. So go ahead and do that now while I check out if there are any comments from those who are live here on the Facebook Live. And uh, let's take a look at the page here. Thanks for your patience while I figure this out. And that's giving you a chance to comment below if you wish to share what your uh, reactions to this video is or your, your questions or your thoughts. Uh, see, thanks for those who are joining me, Tunde, Johannes, Anna. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to any comments or questions you have. And I'm George Cal. For those of you who don't know who I am, I love talking about how do we build a business truly from the heart. Um, 
that is aligned with our higher values and that we can deeply enjoy. So um, I will see you in another video. Take care.